I will give you a light unto the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Gretchen, could you please lead us in the confession of sin? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Gloria, could you please read Psalm 100? Psalm 100, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Today's Psalm is Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inner, inmost parts. You knit together. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld and finished the womb. All of them were written in my book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First reading is from First Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord, the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am and ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
Now the Lord came and stood there calling before Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the door to the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Bathsheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, could you please uh, pray the song of the redeemed? The song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for the food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Jesus in the law and also Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, 
here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Here we are. Thanks be to God. Sorry for the delay. Here we are in the midst of a long weekend once again, when it is so easy to lose sight of the reason for the holiday observance. Be led by the Spirit in hope. St. Paul first wrote these words to tell Christians in Rome that the Spirit of God dwells within them, and that the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. I was reminded when in Italy at Thanksgiving time that the Christian community at Rome was a mixed one, and Paul was trying to avoid the danger of the Jewish and non-Jewish converts looking down on each other. Paul told the community that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And in accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ, all have become adopted children of God and joint heirs with Jesus and have been freed from the slavery of fear to live in hope. Be led by the Spirit in hope. Martin Luther King's well-known dream of the beloved community is an example of being led by the Spirit in hope. And it is what we celebrate on Monday. Dr. King's dream was that people of all races, all classes, all ethnic groups, all nations, and all religions could live together as beloved community. King was led by the Spirit as he tried to bring that dream to fulfillment. Everything he did was for bringing about the beloved community. His aim was for integration and equality among blacks and whites, certainly, but he was also striving for the personal integrity of all the children of God. He believed that all people require the material necessities of life, but that they also need sustenance for their spiritual, psychological, and cultural integration. King developed a global vision believing that concern and action must extend to the larger community and that our concerns must become ecumenical. While his actions focused on local and national injustices, he was thinking of the broader effect of his and his followers' actions on the lives even of his enemies. His whole purpose was reconciliation among all people. And he viewed the civil rights movement as a microcosm of the beloved community with people from all races, from Christian and other faith traditions, and of varying economic status committed to the cause of justice and equality. The beloved community examples this model of fellowship, of the true church body into which we are trying to live. Dr. King's dreams and actions for fulfillment of the beloved community were based on no less than the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, the virtues foundational to our Christian life and witness. In his faith that God can make a way where there is no way, Dr. King had full hope of the Spirit's continuing community-forming presence and his love, that unifying principle, 
for his brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ was exemplified by his nonviolent way of life and method of action. His concept of the biblical God who inspired the prophets and their teachings about justice, mercy, and peace sustained him in his choice of nonviolence as the moral means of attaining the beloved community. The presuppositions of King's beloved community were biblically and theologically based. All persons are created in the image of God, and because of this, all are inseparably bound together. Our worth is rooted not in ourselves as superior to others, but in God. King believed that the message of the prophets, which was the vision of justice, peace, freedom, and equality, was not simply for living in the past, but for our present day living. Christian love, agape, was to be made real in people's daily living and was made clearly evident in their nonviolent way of living and interacting. <clears throat> the beloved community is the community of concern, the union of believers with Christ and the Father in the spirit and with each other. And rhetoric would not do. King had no patience with the standard phrases of brotherhood and human dignity spoken in churches if they were not truly lived out in the world. We Christians, on the brink in our divided society, need to recover the dream of beloved community, which is Christ's commission to all of us who say we are Christian. We look around, we know we are divided, prone to losing health. We would make attempts at forming community, yet we have yet to fully grasp the unity for which Jesus prayed. We cannot pretend that all is well, when it is not. We are fractured, non-inclusive, violent. Evangelization is mixed with nationalistic ideology. We still suffer from racism. We tolerate sexual discrimination, gender bias and classism among the, pro among the trespasses that we are committing. Like Christian communities before us, we must constantly turn to the Lord and we must pray to the Spirit for help in our weakness, lest we fill our churches with only ourselves and send the Spirit running out in search of a new people willing to become God's way of making all into one. Even though Dr. King experienced disappointment, he still did not give up hope. In his Christmas sermon on peace, just four months before his assassination, he said, I still have a dream. Because, you know, you can't give up in life. If you lose hope, somehow you lose that vitality that keeps life moving. You lose that courage to be, that quality that helps you to go on in spite of it all. And so today I still have a dream. When we are tempted to give up hope, we can hold on to the vision of Martin Luther King Jr., believing with him that the beloved community must come to reality within human history. Led by the Spirit in hope of the reality to come, we continue to pray for the unity that God wills, and we work to remove whatever conditions of life in church and society prevent people from fully living their relationship as children of God. We will work to remove the stumbling blocks in our brother's and sister's way. For we will believe with Dr. King that we are tied together in the single garment of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. But each of us must be constantly mindful, constantly mindful that we are inextricably bound to each other. If we are attentive to the prompting of the spirit which lives among us, we must not only be mindful, but heartfully responsible, responsive with our brothers and sisters in faith. No political position, no interest group's agenda is more important than the ministry of us all to be open to and work for 
the actualization of an inclusive human community. It is for us who dare to ask to be led by the spirit in hope to continue living toward becoming the beloved community. Amen. Charlie, if you could please uh, pray the Apostles' Creed. You said me? Okay. Charlie. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I, got, I just had to turn myself on. Um, I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Come on up. Okay. <laughs> this isn't working. Um, he ascended into heaven. And he, whoa. <laughs> okay. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, be with you. Lord be with you. Yeah. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together, Charlie, in the words God taught us. Let us pray. Charlie, you can pray. Okay. Yes, sir. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sue, so if you could help with the suffrages, please. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. That your people joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all earth. Nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Sustain us with your holy Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray now for the sick and the suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray especially today for Josephine Orlando, Kathy Clark, Anita Alexander, Ezekiel Almash, Victoria Ferry, Parker Monez, Mark Gaeta, Ashley Hudson and Emerson Mize Gaeta, Helen Walsh, Helen Ha, Concheta Pumalisi, Richard C. Almash, Anna Kerr Good, April Kerr Valentine. Are there others? Stephanie Siegel. Dick Luzak. Emmanuel. Lord, that we ask that you give your power of healing to all those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we pray the prayer for mission today, we pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Lawrence, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, including our own Father Tom. Uh, and the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Agra in North India. And locally, uh, we pray for our North Shore Deanery partner, St. Mary's Church, uh, Lake Ronkakala. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all the members of your holy church 
that in their vocation and ministry, they may be truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Are there any other intentions for today? For continued guidance to the Accessibility Project. Pray for a successful uh, annual meeting and uh, pray for Holy Spirit to guide us at our next Bishop's Committee meeting on Tuesday night. Okay. Um, John, could you lead us in the general thanksgiving, please, on your screen? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of her glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.